everybody, Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars and this week's video we're going back in time to the future with the DeLorean. Now I love this car not just because it's part of my childhood like with Back to the Future references and there will be a number of them in this video so I'm warning you now it has been charging up on the 1.21 gigawatt charger all night. It's just so we do a count off how many we get and cram into one video. <laughs> so here we are. We're going to cover the Teslorian, as we've started to call it, because this DeLorean is Tesla powered. And in my mind, it's how it should have been from the factory, if you like. And the, I've got the Tesla in the background for a reason, because there's a lot of similarities between this car and that car, or more importantly, between Elon Musk and John DeLorean because both of them were innovators back in their day and they were disruptors coming in with like you know a, a totally innovative uh, solution to a, the automobile compared to the legacy manufacturers that were out there at the time from Ford, GM etc etc but obviously at some critical point one went slightly <laughs> south and one carried on to be what it is today so Let's cover the car first before we get into electrification. I mean, it on paper should have been a massive success. I mean, the bodywork is stainless steel. Awesome idea. Uh, very innovative. Um, the design was by Giugiaro. So it's got timeless design. I mean, even now, just look at the lines on this car. I mean, it just looks awesome now. I mean, I, I would buy this car now if it was remade today. I would buy this car because it just looks fantastic. It, it, the chassis was designed by uh, Colin Chapman, so Lotus designed chassis. So on paper, this should have been an amazing success. Stainless steel body, Lotus designed chassis, fantastic styling and gullwing doors. I mean, who doesn't like gullwing doors? I mean, it should have been brilliant. But then the execution, and I'm slowly working towards one of the Achilles heels, the execution wasn't so fantastic. Um, there was a PRV uh, V6 engine in the back, 2.8 litre, which is not a bad engine. A lot of people say, oh, the engine was awful. No, it, it wasn't. I mean, there were some cars that had the same engine in, like the, the um, GTA, was it the Renault or the Alpine GTA? Alpine GTA, yeah. Alpine GTA had the same engine. That's a great engine. But unfortunately for California smog laws, I mean, it just got strangled. And although it's a 2.8 litre V6, it's only actually putting out, or only was putting out 130 horsepower. So quite asthmatic, really. Especially when you look at the overall car, it just screams, you know, sports car. But then when you actually got to drive one, it was anything but a sports car. And also, you know, handling wise, it wasn't that great as well. One thing that we've tried to do on this car, I mean, obviously we've, we've not messed around with the styling whatsoever, because just look at it, it, it's right first time, quite frankly. But one thing we have done is um, the design height of the front was, was quite low. It was just, just right. But unfortunately, uh, in the US, they had to have the headlights a certain height above the uh, road. And the only way to sort that out was to raise the front end. So you see a lot of DeLoreans kind of like look a little bit off-roady at the front. Well, that's why. So what we've done, we've put an aftermarket uh, coilover setup from KW, which transforms the handling, by the way. Anybody that's got a DeLorean, do that. It's it's a good thing to do. But it also has lowered the front down to not quite design height, but not that far off either. But the good thing about this um, suspension setup, it's got adjustable height all the way around, so you can actually um, set it to where you need to be. So that's the car itself. I mean, as I say, it should have been a raving success, um, but it got to, it was only in production for about two years, but it got to a critical point where you know, new companies often do, especially when you're going from nothing to mass producing a car that's never been built before in factories that were never there before, just like, you know, Tesla did. But at some point, you're going to want another cash injection. And unfortunately, as anybody that knows the story of John DeLorean knows, that didn't happen. Whereas when Tesla got to that cash crunch point, 
they, at the 11th hour, got some money in and continued on to be the success that they are. So what we're left with is an iconic car, but let down in a, a couple of like, areas, which we've tried to address with the uh, conversion that we've done on this car. So without further ado, let's get to the business end and talk about the electrification. Now, there's not really any bad angles on this car. Um, from the rear, I mean, it just looks very 80s with these rear lights, but we had a challenge as to where to put the charge point on this car because the filler is actually underneath the front. Um, on the earlier ones, there was a little flap, but uh, on this model, you had to actually open up the, the, the boot at the front to be able to fill it up, and that ain't going to fly when you're charging uh, an electric car for a few hours. So we put it underneath the number plate. In fact, if I just take it out here now, that's about it. Now you can get the full effect of the rear. Um, you're probably wondering, what's going on with the tailpipes? Well, uh, what's happened is this uh, rubber, oh, not rubber, but plastic bumper is a little bit difficult with the shape and styling of it to fill the exhaust holes. And they looked a little bit odd and lost without the exhaust. So we've made some um, stainless steel, you'll be pleased to know, exhaust pipes just to fill the holes and just keep the, the, the look of the rear. But let's open up the rear. And then you can have a look at the, uh, the battery packs. So there's two covers on here. So that's one. And then that's the other. So what we've got in this vehicle is a small Tesla drive unit. Um, theoretical top power of 300 horsepower, but we're running a lower voltage. So I'd probably say it's more like... 200 uh, horsepower which is plenty enough in this vehicle but loads of torque don't forget that's what really matters with electric vehicles uh, we've got a 70 kilowatt hour battery pack so that's 14 tesla modules uh, and most of them are in the rear here and then down buried underneath there um, is the tesla uh, motor itself and this is um, as i say a i'm not sure what the name of it is it's kind of like a y Remember what the name of the Lotus chassis is? There's a name for them, isn't there? Um, it's, it kind of comes out like a Y, like that, and the motor's buried down there, and then this battery pack is essentially mounted uh, off the engine mounts in the back here. So most of the battery pack's um, in the rear, and the rest is in the front. So let's have a look at the front. Now in the front, this is where the boot is, or the frunk, I think they call them in America. Um, so the battery pack is actually underneath where the petrol tank used to be and here is actually where the petrol filler used to be so there we've just got the the brake fluid reservoirs now so you've still got a I say a decent sized boot it's quite shallow but it, they always are on the DeLorean but obviously quite wide so in here it's still very much 1980s DeLorean so you've got plenty of grey vinyl big rocker plastic switches and stuff here we've ov obviously had to change the the dial setup because uh, now it's got things like amps and uh, voltage and motor temperature and things like that so we've got our own set of dials in there but we've kept some of the iconic little uh, indicators like the the door open i mean you've got to keep that door opening alarm there it's just uh, pure delorium and then here obviously we've got rid of that gear stick and we've got a, a direction knob now so, yeah, internally it's pretty much as it was from the factory with a couple of little alterations. But the main place where you find out the differences on this car is on the road. So let's get on the road. I nearly forgot the coolest feature that we've added to this car. Remote control, door opening. Every DeLorean should have one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember those compilation albums in the 1980s? Oh, now that's what I call music. Uh, just like, Five, yeah. with, all, with all those like sounds of the 80s things. Well, this is the sounds of the 80s for me. Yeah. Can you hear that? Yeah, yeah. Just to tell you the keys in there. And like, if I start the ignition, it's still on there now because you haven't got your seatbelt on. If this, if this was mine, I would take that buzzer out. There we go, we're good to go. All right, All right let's go. Have you uh, filled up Mr. Fusion? Yeah, I put banana skin in. <laughs> right. You made a time machine out of a DeLorean?
Now the first thing I notice when I get in this car has nothing to do with the Tesla drive unit. It's the fact there's a, a VIN plate reflected in the windscreen right in my eye line. Is that normal? Any DeLorean owners out there? Is that normal? Now although this car has plenty of power and torque now, there is one problem with it and that's it's left hand drive. So I need a co-driver like Tim to tell me if I can overtake. Can I overtake? No. Yes. Yep. Oh, when you do overtake, there's plenty of power. But you do need a co-driver. <laughs> now we've got a bit more power and torque and we've upgraded the suspension with that KW suspension package. We're starting to put that Lotus chassis to work a bit more, going around some of these corners. I wouldn't say it's a sports car, but it's not too far away now, actually. Right, we've arrived at our destination. We've done about 40 miles and taken around about 20% of the battery. So what's that, that's about 200 miles, right? Yeah, 200 Go miles. On, maths boy. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so we're gonna have a, a pasty and uh, a drink now. And uh, while we are, I thought I uh, would plug it in because it's free electricity. Note to the plug pirate there. <laughs> and uh, not only that, but it's also powered off the uh, hydro power station just by the dam here, because this is Ellen Valley. So not just free, but also renewable energy as well. So go on in, time for a pie, mate. So there we go, we've had an awesome day out here in Ellen Valley and uh, as is much the case in Wales, it started to rain. Not that the stainless steel body cares much about that because they ain't gonna rust. But this car epitomizes what electric classic cars is all about. It's taken iconic classic and just addressed some of the Achilles heels of that classic, which is in this case, mainly the engine. And to, to some extent, the, the handling was a bit poor as well. So we've got that KW suspension all the way around now and obviously the Tesla drivetrain to push it along the road and push it along it definitely does. So there we go, we've had a fantastic day out and um, uh, I'm interested to hear some comments below as to what other sort of um, classics, like film classics if you like, would make a good electric conversion and what other classics are out there that were let down by its engine but if we converted them to electric would be vastly improved. So let's have your comments below and we'll see you on the next one.